Good afternoon. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Technology Learning Collaborative webinar on digital inclusion for immigrant communities. My name is Kate Rivera. I am a consultant with the Technology Learning Collaborative. Um, just a little bit about TLC. We are a professional organization uh, dedicated to digital literacy, digital inclusion, practitioners, and advocates. Our mission is to drive the digital literacy, access, and inclusion conversation in Philadelphia by promoting professional collaboration, training, and networking among organizations and institutions that have a dedicated interest in moving these areas forward. If you're not already familiar with us, I'm just dropping few links in the chat. You can visit our website or follow us on social media. Um, today's webinar, we'll be hearing from three organizations uh, about their work with immigrants, refugees, and other English language learners. Um, and at the end, we'll have some time for questions. So our presenters today are from Nationality Service Center, CMAC, and the Welcoming Center. Just a couple of very quick housekeeping notes before we get started. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the TLC YouTube channel later this week. Uh, so if anyone um, wants to review it or miss the webinar, it will be available there. I will also be emailing a copy of the presentation slides out to all of the attendees. Uh, so you'll get a copy of the slide deck. And if you have any questions or comments during the presentations, feel free to drop them in the chat and we will have time at the end for any kind of questions or discussion. Uh, and so with that, I will turn things over to our first presenter, Nasser from Nationality Service Center. Thank you, Kate. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm Nasser, the Senior Manager of Economic Opportunity with the Nationality Service Center. Let me quickly, um, you know, tell you a little bit about Nationality Service Center. It's one of the largest uh, refugee resettlement agency um, uh, in, in, the, in the area. Um, we have resettled 500 Afghan refugees in the past eight months so far, and we are ready, like all the other refugee resettlement organizations, to resettle Ukrainian refugees. Um, and we've been doing this, you know, for a very long time. Um, you know, digital inclu inclusion for, you know, immigrants and refugees is very, you know, important and challenging at the same time because, you know, the English component is, is very important. Um, you know, not all immigrants that, and refugees that come here have good English and digital literacy, um, you know, background. Some of the refugees that we've received in the past come to us with, you know, they've been in a refugee camp for 20 years. They don't even know anything about a phone or a laptop, and it has been a challenge back in 2016. So with that said, let me begin with the next slide uh, by saying what we have done so far, um, you know, with all refugees that we resettle, is that we, one, work to make sure that there is hardware and equipment available to those uh, refugees when they come. We've worked with the city of Philadelphia and with Comcast to open our you know, computer lab back in 2019, that was a very, you know, great story for us because we knew this was a gap, the need is important. Um, the, the, you know, the amount of responsibility on us is huge because um, without digital literacy, it's very hard for those refugees and immigrants to pick up, you know, to the speed and the, the digital market, the, you know, the demand for labor shortages, there need, needs to be, um, you know, digital literacy, you know, taking care of. So with the computer lab, unfortunately the pandemic started, it has been closed since then. We're now making plans to reopen it um, and maybe, you know, and taking the, 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 you know, health and, you know, precautions needed. We also worked with the city and other agencies, including Comcast as well, to offer free laptops. So far we have distributed about 600 laptops to refugees. Um, all of those Afghani 500 families that, you know, members that came all have laptops. We also provide cell phones, smart cell phones, so that they can navigate the system. Um, 
that that is you know the the you know the, the what we're doing in terms of hardware and equipment. Next, please. Um, now, when it comes to digital literacy instruction and, and teaching, right? We have identified, you know, beginners. Sometimes we have people with in the pre-beginner level who, you know, literally don't know where the button to start a computer is. Um, and for those, we have been working on a one-on-one -on -one model right now with the pandemic to have volunteers and interns, you know, through our programs work with clients to teach them how to do Zoom, to how to connect to, to, to WhatsApp how to you know, do basic things, um, navigate Google Maps. Um, it also ranges from that to teaching them more, um, a little bit more in terms of how to create an email account, how to check your email. It starts from there. So it, again, the challenge is big, the need is huge. The amount of work needed should be more than this, but we're happy that we've started you know, looking into this um, as a serious issue that we want to work on and collaborate with everybody else in the city uh, and partner with other agencies to, to you know, bridge this gap. Um, for the advanced level, we have been able to um, uh, you know, purchase the North Star Digital Literacy you know, license. It's not expensive for nonprofits. With $500, you can get 3,000 seats. Um, it has worked very well with our clients who know how to speak English um, because we, you know, they can do this self-paced learning model on their own. I'm, I'm sure most of you are familiar with North Star. If not, please look into it. It's very useful, helpful for um, you know, bridging the digital literacy gap. Um, I wanted to say that we are also um, proctoring certificates for that. So clients can who wish to take a certificate once they complete the modules in North Star, um, you know, courses, they can, they can do it. We have a, a designated member of staff, a career coach actually, who does the proctoring and, you know, the exams and offers the certificates. Moving on to the next point on this slide, which is the Good Job Happy Family Program. Um, again, with this collaboration with the city, we also got funded to run the Good Job Happy Family Program, which also focuses on English learning and digital literacy. Um, and we have a specific um, uh, advancement counselor working one-on-one -on, -one on all TANF eligible clients to improve their digital literacy um, levels. We have also worked on you know, translating tutorials uh, because we know for those pre-literate, we need uh, tutorials on how to use Zoom, how to use you know, other things, we record those tutorials. We also found them sometimes, we share them with other agencies, you know, for clients who don't speak English. So you have a, a tutorial on how to use Zoom in multiple languages available on our um, YouTube channel. Next slide. Um, you know, we also believe that with digital literacy instruction, our career coaches have been utilizing um, you know, the technology on the laptops we are distributing, one-on-one uh, -on -one classes that we're doing to teach clients how to do some job searching, resume building, and submitting applications. Um, it is difficult for those who don't speak English, but we're working with those who do speak English to kind of learn how to navigate that on their own. Next slide, please. Um, one of the most important things that we have been able to incorporate is using technology, um, you know, to help with our Refugee Career Pathway Program, which is a federally funded program to help refugees get back on track to, you know, the certificates or the, um, you know, the, the dream job they've been doing back home. So to backtrack a little bit, refugees come sometimes with great experiences that is not used, not utilized. We've seen clients who worked in IT, who worked as doctors, nurses, pharmacists, um, HVAC, technicians that with, you know, those skills are not being utilized very well. So this, through this Refugee Care Pathway Program, we have been able to also offer laptops if clients don't have it, so that they can use it to either learn English um, or attend a course and get funded through this program 
um, and through utilizing the use of technology to get certified and be able to um, put their previous certificates to, to good use in, in, in markets that are in high demand in the Philadelphia area. Um, with that, we also created our NSC blog, um, which is actually summarizing the, all the types of certificates you can, you can um, obtain. Uh, and it's all in one place. Career coaches would work with the client to identify the appropriate um, certification model that they would like to adopt and go from there. With the help of the career coaches, they map out a long-term, you know, could be a year up to a five-year plan so that they can get back to, to where they need to be. And, and I think I'm, I'm using digital literacy here because we offer also digital literacy, North Star for them, so that they are equipped and skilled and ready to, 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 to get a certificate need, needed. With the YouTube channel, we also have um, recorded materials that we upload and, and share it with the clients. And it has worked really well um, so that clients can, can, can find out if they wanna go into the healthcare world, how can they do that? We have it recorded sometimes in other languages, how to be an H, you know, a home health care or, or a nurse, what you need to do. So we have guest speakers come and record um, under career pathways, specific, um, you know, routes the clients need to take to, to be a certified um, you know, nurse. Next slide, please. This is a little bit uh, quick flyer I'm sharing about the program. Um, you know, we offer vocational, vocational English, personalized career planning. I kind of talked about all of these things, job readiness, employment placement assistance. We have client incentives. They have to be, clients have to be all our eligible refugee societies or victims of human trafficking. They need to have been in the United States for less than five years, intermediate to advanced English level required. We can move on to the next slide, please. The other component, I know I covered hardware and equipment. I spoke a little bit about digital instruction, but another component to digital inclusion, I believe, would be internet connectivity. And so um, through our core services that we offer all refugees that come to our door is um, case managers make sure that every client is connected. Uh, you know, we have Internet Essential as an option, which works for most of our, of our clients. They're all eligible to get this because they're all on food stamp when they come, right? They are on um, um, SNAPs, which makes them eligible for Internet Essentials. That's not a problem. We are working with Comcast to eliminate some hurdles, but highlighting the good um, let's say the good achievements, I would say that over 90% or 95% of our clients are connected within two months um, to internet at, uh, you know, uh, at home. And it's only $9.95, um, very affordable and, and cheap. We can offer through also working with other partners, some hotspots, free hotspots in the meantime. Um, we also connect our clients if they're eligible to the broadband benefits, which is a great tool that makes all of our refugee clients eligible. Um, I think it used to cover up to 50, now I'm hearing it covers up to $30 a month if they're eligible um, to cover these costs and, and um, expenses that goes towards connect, connecting them to, to the internet. And it is, it is very important and helpful. It, it connects them to the world. We've had really, really great stories and great successes in the past, um, not necessarily with NSC, but I know in another refugee resettlement agency, I would like to share this story because it, it really means a lot to me. Um, the, the, the recent agency offers digital literacy classes and the digital literacy instructor was able to help this Congolese client learn how to record herself, upload her music to YouTube, and her voice is really, really beautiful. Her story became, you know, her, her voice and recordings became viral, spread along in the, in her original country, only to find out that her son, right, is living with a neighbor who she hasn't seen for a while. And, and just, just looking at how digital literacy is a very powerful tool, not just for daily professional um, advancement, but also to connect people with their uh, family members who they've lost in this refugee crazy world of immigration, right, in, in the refugee world. 
um, where this client lost her son 10 years ago, not knowing where the client or the son is. And now they are reunited, um, I think in Virginia, you know, just because of digital literacy and the power of, of connecting to the world. Next slide, please. Um, I don't know if we take questions now, Kate, or at the end, um, it's, you know, let us know. That's, yeah, um, I'd say unless anyone has a burning burning question, then we'll we'll keep moving on with the presentations and have a, a Q and A discussion at the end. Okay. So thank you, Nasser. Um, and then um, next we'll be hearing from CMAC. Hi, hi everyone. My name is Kahina. I am the digital access and adult literacy coordinator at CMAC. CMAC, which is a nonprofit organization located in South Philadelphia, founded in 1984. So we do have a digital literacy and digital uh, navigation uh, service uh, in, besides the other um, services. So can you go please to the next slide? Um, so at CMAC, the digital navigator acts as a digital support staff providing one-on-one -on -one dedicated connectivity assistance uh, and device assistance, basic digital skills, support via telephone helplines to pre-K students, pre well, students, families, clients, and other community members. So Digital Navigator uh, at CMAC addresses the whole digital inclusion process on connectivity devices and digital skills with community members throughout repeating and interaction. So at CMAC, the digital navigation is in the middle. If you can go to the next slide, please, I will um, just want to explain. So digital navigation is this in the center of our department because all the, all the services are related to, the, to this. Um, since the pandemic started, we switched many things online, classes online, applications online, citizenship applications online, uh, interviews preparation online. So everything switched online. So digital literacy and digital navigation is very, very important. So we do have ACL classes. Uh, we have six classes, uh, including computer classes, digital navigation and digital literacy classes, uh, digital literacy uh, classes, sorry. And we do have naturalization. We enroll people to health insurance, uh, job, job uh, circle classes and, and uh, fill applications. Um, so CVs or how you say, it? sorry, uh, cover letters, we help them preparing all uh, of these things and related to safe family services and civic engagement and voting, registration to vote. All the process is related to the digital um, navigation. Uh, next slide, please. So here are some of um, our clients' needs. So they need low cost internet. They need assistance to apply for free internet or low cost internet. They need free device. They need, um, they need dig digital literacy trainings. So I will try to summarize this. So at CMAC, we help people enroll into free or low cost internet through different programs. So we do have the ICP program which is $30 a month that helps families to pay for the internet. It was EBB, then it stopped in January, then switched to ICP, which is $30 a month. And all, P all families that have uh, public benefits like EBT, SNAP food or Medic aid, they qualify for the service. And we do have another service, which is uh, internet essentials. All families with kids at school, uh, they qualify for internet essentials, which is $9.99. $9 and automatically they qualify also to ICP. So they can, from $9.99, we can switch it to be free for all the families and people who, who have uh, public uh, benefits. And then at CMAC, we offer free devices. We served many laptops, more than 200 families served for with free laptops to join the classes or to search for a job, to fill job applications, to use it for their daily life. So we do uh, serve free uh, devices and free um, hotspots for families with kids as well. 
and we do have we you do enroll people to low cost uh, devices like the one hundred fifty dollars laptops, Comcast laptops. So we do enroll people to this. Uh, service as well. And then we do have digital literacy training in our uh, computer class, in the class, and we do have digital assistant, digital, digital literacy assistance uh, 101 here at the V Center in South Philadelphia. So we assist individually uh, people, uh, our clients. Next slide, please. So here uh, we have some digital navigators. We do have Beyond Literacy, our partners, and we do have Drexel and CMAG is our uh, organization. So you have on this slide the main contacts for each uh, organization. And the next slide, please. And you, you. So it means if you cannot like assist 101 or if you don't have this service in your agency, so what you can do is just to refer to us, refer to us as a digital navigation agency so we can help the client. And in the next slide, you may have uh, helpful resources. Uh, the next one, please. So helpful um, resources that can help you and your uh, clients. And then we share with you in the next slide, please, um, the form the form to refer to CMAC. If you want to refer your clients to CMAC, please just fill this short form. Just uh, it, it contains uh, essential information like name, phone number, and the needs of the client. So it, will, it, make, it makes it easy for us to reach out to the client and then follow the case until the client get all the, what they need in digital navigation and free internet and device. Uh, next slide, I think it's the last one. Here are the main contacts at CMAC. So Kahina is me and Cassandra Manusam, who is the digital navigator specialist at CMAC. And Hannah Aragon was, I can say was, because she left us uh, recently. So that's it for uh, my side and uh, free to ask questions. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Kahina. Uh, and then um, our last presenter from the Welcoming Center, um, and after that, we'll have time for questions. So start thinking about um, what you're experts. Great. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Jill Jacobs Cohen. Um, thank you to Kate for having me here today. Um, I am the director of ELL, English Language Learner Support and Training at the Welcoming Center. Um, it was great to hear about the work of NSC and CMAC. Uh, we're all serving immigrants, English learners, refugees, but we're doing somewhat different work. So I think together we're meeting a range of needs, which is great. Um, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about our work today um, overall, and in particular in the digital literacy space. Um, most of you on the call, you might be familiar with our work, but just to give a brief overview, um, the Welcoming Center promotes inclusive um, economic development through immigrant um, immigration and integration. And we do that primarily through three general areas. So one is workforce development. So connecting our participants with family sustaining employment um, through career coaching, through job fairs, through our International Professionals Program. Um, another area is community engagement. So connecting our participants to community building, networking, and engaging with the social and civic life of the city and the region. Um, and then also entrepreneurship, working with um, our participants who want to start and sustain their own businesses. Now, my role, um, is actually related to that, uh, those three areas, because we're a little bit different um, than some organizations in that English or ESL, it's not its, not its own uh, area. We see English language development as applicable to our work across the organization. Um, and we seek to integrate it into the pathways that our, um, our participants are pursuing. And that um, actually, Kate, you can go to the next slide, if you will. Okay. So traditionally, um, as I'm sure many of you are aware of, ESL and digital literacy are very siloed. 
there are very distinct entities. Um, and so typically an English language learner might go to an organization and take ESL classes, but digital literacy is often a separate offering. And so what often happens is they're either developing their English, um, but they're not developing digital literacy, or they're trying to cope in a digital literacy class um, and not very well and often not persisting because they don't have the language support. And so at the Welcoming Center for a number of years, we've been really thinking hard about how do we integrate these two spheres? How do we integrate the English language development, such a serious need, with other critical skills that our participants need to thrive economically, civically, socially? Digital literacy is one critical component of that, but other skills, um, learning how to job search, learning about workplace culture in the United States. Um, we're thinking about this integration piece. And so what I wanna to talk today is a little bit about curriculum and what it looks like to design an integrated ESL skills type of course. Um, this is something we've been engaged in for about four years. Our work around this started pre-pandemic. Uh, we started to develop an integrated course, which I'll talk about a little bit more uh, in, the moment, in a moment. Because of the pandemic, um, things of course got a little bit derailed. We had to do a lot of adapting. We had to halt the course for a while, but we're in a process now of bringing it back. Um, in fact, we just started a new session today, so it's very exciting. Um, and we're figuring out now in this uh, even more intensive digital world, how to do this integrated English and skills training well. Um, so it's a work in progress, but we're learning a lot of lessons. Um, can you go to the, the next slide? Okay. So, just to give a brief understanding of integrated education and training, IET, which is a phrase many on the call may, have, may be familiar with. Um, but over the last few years, this is a model that is uh, kind of taking hold. And there's a lot of innovative programs developed nationally in community organization contexts, community college contexts. And the basic premise here is that we want to take either adult basic education or ESL, and we want to teach it concurrently with other skills, either occupation specific skills um, or digital literacy skills. And there is a growing body of research that really shows that this type of model can increase motivation and persistence for learners, and it can more uh, it can accelerate their entrance into career pathways and economic advancement. Um, and generally, in this kind of education model, the language and the skills are contextualized to the generalized workforce or the occupation specific content. So, to give you an example of how we do that in our program, we might teach something like the tenses something all English learners need to learn, like past, present, and future tense, not in an isolated way, like in a traditional ESL classroom, but in the context of a personal timeline that they develop to form the basis of their job search tools, like a resume or a cover letter or an elevator pitch. So it's an English class, but all of the content is contextualized to, in this case, the job search process and learning about workplace culture. Um, the next slide, please. Okay, so that brings me to our sort of feature integrated program that we've been developing for a few years. Uh, we call it FOCUS, which stands for the Foundations of Communication for the US. Um, this course came about um, because of our data from our participants and nationally um, that showed that the gap in digital literacy skills was a really serious impediment for English learners seeking to um, advance in, in the workplace and the economy. Um, and so a former colleague of mine, Bryce Bayer, who I know has been involved with this collaborative, um, helped to develop this curriculum about, about three and a half, four years ago. 
And it was a real experiment in the integration of English language learning with digital literacy. And in this case, um, also with job searching skills and learning about workplace culture. Um, and it was originally designed as a 12 week class, three days a week, pretty intensive um, with some individual assistance outside of the classroom. We piloted that program twice pre-COVID um, and now for the last year, we've been engaged in adapting it to an online format um, for optimal safety. And it's now a shorter course, seven weeks, um, which was a decision we made because of the difficulty of being online for that amount of time for 12 weeks, um, three hours each, each session. So we're working with it, the particular structure as sort of the pandemic issues develop and we see what we can do. But in general, as you can see on the screen, it was designed to support immigrants in Philly with digital literacy instruction and English language instruction concurrently, with the goal being to prepare them with the foundational career, digital literacy, English language and intercultural communication skills needed to engage in the job search, interview process uh, with confidence and to enter the workforce prepared. So there's a lot we're trying to do here. Um, and sometimes when people hear about it, it might sound a little overwhelming. There's a, there's a lot going on there, digital literacy, English, um, but we're learning a lot about how to design instruction that does pull together all of these threads. Um, can you go to the next slide? Okay, so I know I don't have a whole lot of time. I just wanted to talk about a couple features of this kind of curriculum. Um, and I want to stress that these kinds of strategies for English learners, um, they're pretty universally important, meaning that if you're a digital literacy instructor, instructor and you don't have a background in teaching English, English, it's not too hard to learn some of these strategies to make digital literacy skills accessible for English learners. And most digital literacy instructors today have students who are English learners. Right, so it's important that we start to think of these two spheres as operating together. Um, so just a, a simple example here of what we might do within the context of the focus course to um, help to orient uh, English learners and to help to prepare them for digital learning. So one thing is priming, which is just a conversation starter or an activity to kind of tap into uh, knowledge that they're already bringing to the classroom, um, to get them interested in the topic, um, and to kind of get them ready um, for, for the unit, for the digital unit. So here, for example, uh, we might read a short passage about how technology is used today, um, independently with a partner, and then have conversation and answer some questions. Um, we might explore what devices they have and already know how to use. Um, what do they not have? What do they want to know how to use? So this is conversation practice, but it could be a good primer for any student. And then really critically important, we do a range of things to develop vocabulary and to support vocabulary development before teaching the digital literacy skills. Um, so for example, we might match some images with tech terms or vocabulary. And we use uh, the website Quizlet, which some might be familiar with, um, where they can look at flashcards with this vocabulary and do a variety of activities to learn those terms. And then uh, after they do that for a while, they'll come back and we'll ask them to explain the process of opening an account on the Quizlet website, uh, repeating back steps of the process that they learned which can really help to build their language. But again, these are things that any students um, can benefit from, even if they're not English language learners. Um, can you go to the next slide? Okay, and this is just a screenshot of the Quizlet website that we use. It's an important part of the class. And for each digital literacy unit, we have a set of terms and we teach the students in a very step-by-step -step fashion how to utilize this website on their own time at home and sometimes in class to look at pictures of the terms and then they click the card and they can see the word on the back 
And then there's a variety of activities they can do to reinforce and solidify that vocabulary. Okay, you can keep going. Okay, and this is just another example of how we might do a matching activity with pictures and words uh, before we're really getting into teaching a digital skill, making sure they're oriented um, to, to the, um, the skills that we're going to teach. Okay, you can keep going. Okay, and I know I have limited time, but just another idea of what this might look like in practice, kind of how we weave together these strands to make digital literacy learning more accessible for our participants. So this is a sample of a session uh, of a unit within the focus class on timekeeping, scheduling, and organization. Obviously something very important in the context of the US workplace. Um, and this is very different for many of our participants than what, what they might have experienced in their home country or culture. Concepts of time is, is deeply cultural. So we might start um, with an activity that um, where we get them talking about different perspectives on time. I'll show you something related to that in just a minute. Um, because by the end, we want them to understand the expectations of time in the US workplace compared to other places. By the end, we want them to be able to discuss a weekly schedule using some of their English skills, like using prepositions, for example, is important in discussing time. Um, we also want them to use target vocabulary around schedules and scheduling, and then our digital literacy skill, which is being able to create and share a schedule using Google Calendar. So if you can go to the next slide. Okay, so just a quick example of how we might enter this unit. We would have a conversation starter with this on the screen where uh, people would look at these situations like Michael, an American, is visiting Mexico on business. He gets invited to a party by a Mexican, Mexican colleague at 7 p.m. What time should he arrive for the party? So we would discuss this in um, partners or with partners or small groups. And this gets a really great discussion going around cultural differences around time. And it's great practice for our English learners. Um, can you go to the next slide? Okay. And then from there, before we're actually teaching the use of Google Calendar, we're thinking about what English skills are necessary to be able to do that effectively, right? How can we bring them into that topic in a way where they will be able to do it. So for example, we would um, talk, make sure people know the days of the week, the months of the year, how to say dates correctly, how to read dates correctly, which could be very different in the American context. So we would do a variety of language-based activities. Like for example, here, you're looking at a slide of, around syllable stress, which is an important topic in ESL. So we're doing these kinds of activities for some period of time before we're getting to the digital skill. And you can go on to the next slide. Okay, um, again, here is a slide related to understanding the format of dates in the US. Um, so this is great for English learners, but even those with lower levels of formal education who may be native English speakers can benefit from this kind of curriculum. Okay, you can keep going. Okay, um, prepositions would be a critical uh, skill in talking about timekeeping and scheduling. So we would do some activities related to the use of at, in, and on, which are prepositions of time. And each student has a course book with some activities that are related to these topics. So these are just some of the slides we would use, but there's other material that we've developed. Um, you can keep going. Okay. And then we would transition into looking at somebody else's schedule and talking about it using the language that they've just learned to talk about what they're seeing in somebody's schedule. And then also writing their own schedule first just on paper in their course book before we're doing anything digitally. So you can keep going. Okay. Um, and then now we're ready for our digital literacy piece. So this would involve um, watching a video about Google Calendar answering some questions, maybe making some predictions. And then you can go ahead, Kate. Okay. 
And then the teacher would be modeling through the use of screenshots, or sometimes we make videos using um, Screencastify, uh, a free service to create a short video with step-by-step -step instructions that they will learn in the class, but they will also receive after each class to make sure that they can follow the steps at home. And you can just go through the next few quickly, Kate, just to see what our screenshots might look like in teaching the skill. Okay, you can go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. And then finally, um, they would then try the skill out themselves with support. Um, okay, you can, you can keep going, Kate. Okay, so that's just an overview of what integrated curriculum looks like. Um, and again, it can be a bit overwhelming for people who aren't English instructors or don't have that background, but these are teachable uh, facilitation strategies um, that really any instructor can learn. And so I'm excited about the prospect of kind of sharing with other organizations and teachers to see how we can kind of weave digital literacy and other skills, um, well, into ESL and then vice versa, um, because they're really interconnected forms of literacy today. Um, what you see on this slide are just some of the other resources that we use within the class, um, like Nasser talked about. We also use North Star Digital Literacy Assessments, which is an amazing tool. It is not so accessible for beginners um, because it does have, it is written in English, all of the questions. And so sometimes there's a, a little bit of a challenge there in figuring out whether we're testing digital literacy or English. So that's something we're talking about at the Welcoming Center, how we can address that. Um, but we also use, as I mentioned, Quizlet, an excellent tool for vocabulary development. And we're very excited about this. We're using a program called NGEN. It was called Voxy. You may have heard of that. Now it's called NGEN. And it's an English language learning platform um, that also has a digital literacy skills component. Um, and it teaches English in the context of topics that students are interested in. So if they're interested in healthcare, for instance, they can learn English for healthcare using that platform. Um, so we use that in the course as well. Um, and then lastly, we use Padlet, which is an excellent website where we can, we use it as a learning management system that's very simple for English language learners. Sometimes things like Google Classroom or Canvas can be a little overwhelming. Padlet simply looks like a cork board and we can just post assignments relevant to each day or week in a, in a really accessible way. And my last slide, you can just see what Padlet looks like. Okay, if you haven't seen it before, Padlet, like I said, it's simply a cork board. You can choose your background and we arrange it by week. We just started today. So we have all the links that are relevant to what we're teaching in each session that our students can go back to between sessions to click the links, to look at slides, to look at the screenshots, look at directions again for the digital literacy skills, and a variety of other resources that they can refer to. So it's a very comprehensive course and it takes a lot. It takes a lot to do it, but we find that with all of these pieces woven in um, and all of these different forms of support, it really is resulting in, in an excellent response and both English language and digital literacy, literacy skills developing rapidly. Um, so thank you and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks so much, Jill. Those are some really great concrete examples of integrated learning. Um, and, and thanks again to our, our other panelists as well. We do have um, a little bit less than 15 minutes left for questions or discussion. Uh, so uh, I invite everyone here, um, if you have questions for one or, or all of the panelists, um, or if you have comments or insights that you want to share from doing this work, uh, please feel free to to either drop the what you'd like to say into the chat and we can address it um, from there or if you want to uh, unmute yourself and ask your your question or or make your comment verbally you're welcome to do that as well um while folks are maybe thinking about their, their questions 
Um, I'll, I'll start by just asking um, all three of you if you have any um, lessons learned that you want to share um, from doing this work, maybe some trial and error that you've gone through that you think might be helpful for others to hear about. Um, um, yeah, so any, any thoughts on that? Um, I'll speak to that because I also think it, I uh, see Arlen asked a question. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Are the programs available to all or is there specific criteria? One thing I'll say about our course is that it is geared towards English learners who are at least at the low proficiency level. Um, that's who it is most accessible for. Um, it really wouldn't be appropriate for beginners. And what's really nice now is there's such a wide landscape of beginner ESL offerings. So we are doing a lot of referral um, to CMAC, to NSC, to uh, Beyond Literacy. Um, and we're, we're now really serving kind of um, participants after they're getting through the beginner stage. Um, and we've learned that this is kind of like a nice, um, we're forming nice partnerships and connections with other organizations so that we're not kind of um, repeating the same services. Yeah, I, I do agree that um, we share uh, with NSC and the Welcoming Center and the other organizations. For example, in our classes, we do, we are working with the refugees, undocumented uh, participants, undocumented students and pre-beginners. And then, for example, I many times we refer students for the IPP program at the Welcoming Center, which requires a, lot, a certain level in English, in English. So once we see that, that the, the student is ready for that, we refer to the Welcoming Center, and then they refer to us the pre-beginners. So that's yeah. an amazing work and connection. So thank you. Yeah, and just, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Master. Oh. I just wanted to say that, yeah, one, one of the, I think, lessons learned is that um, it, it takes time, you know, for anyone to learn English uh, language and be in, on a proficient level, maybe five years sometimes. So imagine like going to another country, let's pick Japan and, and, and you expect yourself to, and, and if you don't know any digital literacy at all, um, I think it, it may be unfair to wait long time for you to be able to download a bank account so you can check your balance or use all, you know those skills so we, we kind of learned that you can use their own language to begin with if they speak zero english they need the digital literacy skills why not put do one-on-one -on -one or, or maybe present a tutorial but at the same time definitely work with those who know english to provide those skills in english and do the great work that jill has been you know um, highlighting where you can you know, include English with uh, digital literacy uh, topics. Um, you know, I, I just want to also say that we have also learned that, you know, you have to kind of treat each case by case differently, you know, whether they prefer a one-on-one -on -one or a class or in their language, or we have also like assigned Burlington licenses, which is like an ESL program for them to learn English. And we kind of do the, the digital literacy navigation for them by downloading it on their uh, phones or computers and, and get them set up to, to, to get started. But, but, but it, it's, it's a very important um, aspect that, you know, immigrants need to have this, um, you know, digital literacy service available as well. Yeah. And one thing I've noticed about um, the use of the digital platforms, of which there are many now, whether it's North Star, Burlington, Voxy, they're great resources, but they still require the human touch and relationship. So some organizations that are kind of trying to do the English development or the digital literacy through kind of connecting a participant and having them work on their own, what we're finding it really does not work well. They need either that one-on-one -on -one coach or the context of a class or a conversation group to really be checking in and encouraged to persist. So they're great tools, but they can't, they can't stand alone. Great. Did you have a, a question from in the chat asking, are, are, 
are these tutorials available to the public or only for the clients from each agency? Mm -hmm. Um, I can speak for our resources. We put them on a YouTube channel. Um, yeah, and, and, and they're open to, to the public in different languages. They don't only have like digital literacy component, but I can share in the chat in a moment um, our YouTube channel, if, if that would be helpful for others. Um, in terms of, I I'm also have seen the question related about capacity and, uh, and um, it, it is some of the programs are funded and some of them are based on volunteers. Um, uh, so, so it's a mix of both. Eligibility for us as NSC National Service, they have to have um, the refugee status um, to be eligible to enroll in our employment and ESL programs. Um, but some of the digital literacy services that are available are available to all immigrants that come into our doors. Very, very small portion, like North Star may be one of those, um, but it's not... Um, I, th I don't think big big portion of it is open to the public. Yeah, ours are open, um, you know, to to the public. And most of our participants are hearing about our programs from people who've come through programs at the welcoming center. So there's a lot of word of mouth. Um, focus is just growing now. Uh, we have a new instructor. Um, who is a, a, an expert instructor, uh, but we also utilize volunteers and sometimes practicum, practicum students from local universities. Um, we just started a cohort today with 14. The hope is to continue to build and be able to offer it to more people. Um, one of the things we're learning is that we have our IPP, our International Professionals Program, for which participants need to have a bachelor's degree from their home country. For focus, they don't need that. And so it's becoming an important place for folks who maybe aren't ready for something like IPP. Some of them are fairly confident in their English and might be advanced conversationally, but they don't know the specific terms for the job search process, the job search tools, and the culture of the workplace in the US. So even if their English is somewhat strong, they still, there's a really strong need for this content. Um, so we're finding that it's becoming a really good space for those who aren't quite ready for something like IPP just yet. Um, thank you. For us at CMAC, yeah, we do have a bench which is open for the public. Uh, we do have our website, different, uh, we use different social media and we, the, the courses are as, assumed by the staff and the mixed, some volunteers. And we do have a multilingual staff. We do have 20 languages spoken by the staff, 20 different languages. And so sometimes the other outreach workers, they just volunteer and join the class to translate, to help the students, especially who are working with pre-beginners. So the staff is helping too much, thank you. Right. And then, so the, it sounds like for, I mean, each of you talked a little bit, a little bit about the eligibility requirements for your um, classes and the programs that you offer. So for, for people who do meet those eligibility requirements, um, do you currently have capacity to, for new students? Or what does that look like for each of your agents? Mm -hmm. Um, for us, the, we have a focused cohort running right now, which will run for the next two months. Um, and then we're in decision making about when the next session will be offered. That may not be until September because of some possible different summer programming. Um, but we will um, be posting that on our website, on our social media. Um, we have uh, a flyer that we put on, on LinkedIn and Facebook with a link to, to apply. Um, and so when we have solidified those upcoming dates, when, when we will be able to offer it again, uh, we will certainly, um, you know, that will be out there. That information will be out there. Um, and anybody can please feel free to contact me to find out that information if you'd like. Um, at CMAC, we do have uh, a coming a program. We will have a digital literacy class and we will have a digital um, uh, lab. 
So it will be a cohort of three months each, three months for each cohort for one year. It will start on July. So we are planning and working on the logistics and preparing for, for, for that. So feel free to reach at me or Cassandra Manutam, who is a digital navigator, or Jenny Campbell, who is an instructor ASL. So this is uh, a coming uh, program in our agency, and we will share in our website and on the, all the pages that we have and social media that we use. Um, I just shared in the chats now the resources that we have on our um, NS employment blog that pertains to digital literacy um, things, but but we kind of have limited capacity in terms of like the laptop, free laptops that we offer and the one-on-one -on -one to um, only a refugee population. And we already serve every refugee that comes our, our way. Um, but we do have uh, the, the Good Job, Happy Family program is open to anybody in Philadelphia that has TANF and is refugee to be referred to our program. At CMAC, we work with uh, American citizens, with permanent residents, and with refugees. And we work with uh, beginners and pre beginners and intermediate as well. Final question here is, are, are, are these classes remote or face-to-face, -face, and are they limited to certain countries? I guess we could also say languages. Good question. Um, at the Welcoming Center, um, so we adapted our focus course to an online format, um, but just today for the first time, really since COVID happened, um, we had some students come in to do their North Star assessments. So on a limited basis, we're doing some in person, but not large groups and with a lot of distance and masks, but it's primarily online now. Um, we're hoping that that will shift to uh, a, a hybrid um, or, you know, probably not fully in person, but a combination, hopefully, as soon as we're clear that it's safe to do that. Um, and we are open to immigrants from all backgrounds. Right now, our cohort of 14 represent 11 different countries. So we're open to all, all countries and all languages. We have... Um... Online right now, we again we just started um, this month doing our job readiness courses um, in person again on a limited basis, a small class um, because of the restrictions. Uh, at CMAC, we do have eight classes um, online, and now in this summer we are um, at the spring cohort. But for summer cohort, we will have in person classes. And for the project like um, lab, digital lab, and uh, the coming project will be a 100% in person, but limited students in the class. So it will be hybrid in summer. Okay, well, we are at time. So thank you so much again to Nasser and Kahina and Jill for sharing about the work of your respective organizations. Um, I also want to thank Comcast. Uh, they helped sponsor our webinar series for TLC. Um, and thank you all for attending. Uh, and we will be sending out the slides from this um, later today. And the recording will be posted on our YouTube channel as well. Thank you so much, Kate. Thank so you so much, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Have a